Olá, seja bem-vindo ao Campo Diplomático, espaço dedicado às relações do Brasil com o mundo. Eu sou Catiúcia Soto Maior e hoje converso com o embaixador do Azerbaijão no Brasil, Elham Polukhov. Formado em História pela Universidade de Leningrado, na Rússia, com PhD em Ciência da História, ele foi professor em universidades como a de Nebraska, nos Estados Unidos, e desde 2002 atua em funções diplomáticas, com experiências na África do Sul, Angola, Zimbábue e Moçambique, entre outros países. Welcome, Your Excellence. Thank you very much for your presence. Olá, Katiusia. Uh, on Azerbaijan, we say salam. Salam. Thank you very much for invitation. It's honor and privilege to be in this studio and to get this chance to talk with esteem auditory, a large auditory which you have on your TV. Thank you very much. Let's start talking about your country. Azerbaijan has almost all existing climates, which allows for many different, different crops and invests a lot in organic agriculture. How do you uh, imagine your country doing that nowadays and after the pandemic? Uh, as you correctly mentioned, uh, Azerbaijan, which despite has a relatively small territory uh, compared with Brazil, 86,000 uh, square kilometer, but Azerbaijan enjoy of having nine climatic zone from 11 existing, which uh, allow to agriculture sector develop uh, in different directions. That's why we today had a variety of agriculture products which were produced uh, in the country. And uh, this variety of products allow us to secure our own food security. But parallel to that, it's also uh, one of the items of export. I cannot say that it's the largest item of the export of Azerbaijan, but still it's there. As you correctly mentioned, uh, our agriculture sector, especially food production sector, uh, has his own standards and quite uh, deeply developed uh, regulations, which uh, bring the situation when products uh, in Azerbaijan are mostly organic. We do not allow to have a big percentage of gene modified components of any product which produced in Azerbaijan or imported to Azerbaijan. And this led to the, of course, uh, some kind of limitation on uh, volume of production, but it's very healthy. That's why uh, Azerbaijan products, it's quite well known in his own region uh, and it's, uh, has his own potential market outside of the country. But with the pandemic, did it change a little bit or not? No. <clears throat> of course, uh, pandemic influenced the economy. Pandemic uh, brought its own correction to the process. Uh, country was under the lockdown for some period of time. Uh, internal, let's say, consumption also went down because most of the uh, big events was canceled, like weddings, uh, other gathering of people. Uh, where products usually uh, consumed much more than in regular uh, time or regular life. <clears throat> but it doesn't lead to the situation when we change the standards. Besides that, uh, last year we uh, had the chance, we were uh, lucky to restore our territorial integrity and return under the control of 20% of our territory, which was under the Armenian occupation for many years. And this 20% of territory are mostly arable lands. It's historically uh, was designed for agriculture production and people who live there used to be involved in agriculture. And today, 20% uh, of additional lands uh, into the agriculture sector bring challenges, but also a lot of opportunities for us. Uh, on this territory, we have to build everything from scratch. Unfortunately, all the infrastructure was uh, des destroyed, demolished uh, during the occupation. Uh, no roads, no uh, electric lines, no water pipes, nothing. So, but uh, it's also opened opportunities for us to build green economy on this uh, area, uh, to build smart cities, smart villages, to go through this process to make uh, uh, that territory, not only uh, that territory, but all territory of Azerbaijan more ecologically friendly. 
As I said, of course, um, pandemic made its own correction. Uh, pandemic, a uh, little bit limited uh, consumption and sale of agriculture products. Azerbaijan used to get uh, every year millions and millions of tourists. And agriculture sector also was designed for that, to uh, feed the visitors of Azerbaijan. While this last year, because of pandemic, we didn't have a big flow of foreigners or visitors to the country. But we're expecting, we're working on that direction. Uh, we're preparing for post-pandemic uh, time or period. That's why we concentrate a lot. Generally, uh, around a little bit less than half of territory of Azerbaijan are uh, prepared for agriculture use. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, some land still is not touched. Uh, we preserve these lands, but most of the lands are today cultivated. Different uh, agriculture products, uh, livestock, agriculture products uh, cultivated there and produced there. But again, as I said, it's a lot of potential. The, I would say around 40% of population are living in rural areas. Um, but in agriculture sector, uh, we have a more or less uh, around 10% of uh, population involved in purely agriculture sector. If we expand it to the livestock, processing, uh, fishing, uh, water preservation, it's much more. But when you're talking only about agriculture, it's uh, around 10%. Can we say it's in, an important number for your GPD? Yes, uh, again, uh, for us, it's important to uh, reserve our food security. And nowadays, uh, it's one of the biggest priority of every country in the world when you have to first uh, to make sure that food security is uh, secured, it's reserved. And after that, of course, you can think about uh, expansion of your product. And as I said in the beginning, it has its own limitation. Products must be organic. And if, when it's organic, you cannot uh, expect big volume of uh, products or crop or <coughs> harvest. Uh, but uh, it's allow us to keep it. We had a, a roadmap of development of agriculture. And this roadmap calculated, it was adopted in 2016. Uh, but uh, it's calculated for 25, 50 year in ahead, where we designed the strategy, how we see development of agriculture sector. And main body who is responsible for implementation of this uh, roadmap, it's Minister of Agriculture, which we have. And under the, this uh, Minister of Agriculture, we have a number of agencies which are involved in implementation of this uh, roadmap. What about imports and exports? Uh, is Brazil an important partner? Definitely. Uh, Brazil is uh, one of the main uh, partners on this direction. Uh, what we mostly import from Brazil is meat, uh, different type of the meat. Uh, we used to import from Brazil also chicken poultry, but nowadays our own production is uh, well designed, well organized. So Azerbaijan itself start to export chicken to the uh, other countries. But still we get uh, quite a sufficient amount of uh, different products. It's meat, it's tobacco, it's soya, soybeans, it's uh, sugar cans. So uh, all of these items led to the situation when we stably every year has turned over between 150 million to 200 million uh, US dollars. And it's mostly 99% uh, of it, it's export from Brazil to Azerbaijan. Only in 2000, unfortunately we don't have statistic for 2020 yet, it was not published, but what I can say that uh, only in 2019, Export from Azerbaijan to Brazil reached 5 million US dollars. Previously, it was less than 1 million. Uh, and it's mostly fertilizers for agriculture sector of Brazil. Azerbaijan uh, recently uh, finalized construction of plant, which designed to produce uh, fertilizers. And that has a huge market. Uh, nowadays, uh, agriculture sector is very important for every country. 
And this is area where we have a partnership with Brazil. And are there new opportunities that we can try and look for? Uh, it's plenty of opportunities, as I said in the beginning. First of all, uh, I mentioned about uh, this 20% of liberated lands, where we every will build, build everything from scratch. And from that point, I believe that uh, Brazilian technologies uh, will well fit to this new reality when your experience on uh, building the correct, uh, on the correct way uh, agriculture and agriculture sector in different ways, uh, not only production of crops or fruits, but also uh, meat production, livestock. Uh, but parallel to that, we uh, believe that we need to learn your uh, experience on preservation and restoration of forests like you do in Amazonia, for example. Uh, why it's important? Because during the time of occupation, all the forests, pra practically all the forests on these occupied territories was cut and uh, moved from other countries, sold by occupants. And now we have to start to work on restoration of the forests and uh, to make sure that uh, traditional areas where the trees used to grow naturally. They have to be restored and we need to find the most successful experience. And Brazil definitely has this experience. But uh, also another area where we can also learn from you a lot is cultivation of citruses, uh, cotton production, rice production. This is area where definitely uh, Brazil with its knowledge and professional approach can help a lot. I should mention, for example, that uh, both countries very uh, intensively work on that direction. And agreement between two ministers of agriculture is practically ready to be signed. And unfortunately, uh, this pandemic brought his own correction to the diplomatic life too. Uh, that's why uh, this document is ready to be signed and we're waiting for a new chance of visit of my minister or your minister to Azerbaijan where it can be signed. And through this document, it's going to open avenue for both sides to uh, come and share, to organize mutual visits, maybe training in specialized uh, institutions where our specialists can come learn or your specialist can go assess and give their own advice. Let's hope it happens. <laughs> for sure. Now, you mentioned the green economy and uh, all the technologies Brazil has. Um, what your country, your government, do your government invest in this kind of innovation nowadays? Definitely, uh, definitely. We had uh, several institutions, our own institution, where uh, different researches undertaken. But parallel to that, we are uh, learning experience of other countries. We uh, quite uh, intensively invite foreign specialists from all around the world with their uh, knowledge and expertise to visit Azerbaijan, to share their knowledge, uh, to share their uh, experience with us. For example, uh, we had a special state program where uh, state subsidize uh, different areas of agribusiness or agro-production. Uh, they subsidize, for example, uh, uh, by supporting uh, fuel and fertilizer use. Uh, state uh, allocate money for that. We also help to the small farmers especially to uh, use the technologies, machineries with discounted price. And we uh, bring, uh, give some incentives, quite big incentives to the expert of technologies related to the agriculture, to Azerbaijan when technologies which come to Azerbaijan for agriculture use usually has very limited taxation or even low, even uh, no custom uh, taxation on that area. That's why um, we concentrate on uh, building and supporting uh, green economy to demonstrate to the region that uh, today we have to take care about ecology. We have to take care about environment. We have, and through that to uh, secure future 
life of future generation, to give them country or economy which green friendly, and it's counted not for 10, 15, no, but forever. And you talked about these incentives. There are uh, public policies specifically for the family farmers, right? Can you um, talk a little bit about that, please? Yes, um, we have a special agency <clears throat> under the Minister of Agriculture which provides small and medium credits to the families or small farmers who uh, want to be involved or to be part of the production. They organize uh, it's several agencies. Uh, some of agencies provide uh, machineries, technologies. Some agencies provide credits. Uh, some agencies help to sell the product to the farmers. But parallel to that, one of the uh, important area where uh, state concentrate his attention is to uh, support more involvement of women to the agriculture. Family business, especially family business oriented to the active participation of ladies, women to the, in, in this process. That's why a special program designed for that uh, woman who has an interest in not exactly or directly necessarily to be involved in um, planting the trees or something like that, but in processing, uh, organizing, selling of agriculture products. So uh, we organize trainings for that. We provide uh, microcredits. We help uh, with, to the startups who want to be involved in this uh, process. And through this, uh, we encourage people uh, look to the villages or agriculture as a potential area for self-employment. Nowadays, uh, unfortunately, uh, urbanization process is going very fast in most of the countries when the people prefer to move to the big cities with more opportunities and stay there. And to motivate people to stay in a village or stay in a, a rural area and be involved in agriculture products, process, we also stimulate through the taxation system. People who invest to the agriculture sector, to the farming, uh, they don't pay taxes for many years, practically, in Azerbaijan. And as I said, they get uh, fuel and uh, seeds and fertilizer by subsidized price. Uh, they get a lot of incentives and privileges. Uh, and this process allows us to give the people opportunities to stay where they live traditionally and develop the traditional agriculture sector to be involved in uh, their traditional activities in that area. And as I said, uh, this uh, returning back again, this new 20% of territory opened completely new opportunities for people uh, who will move back to their homes. But parallel to that, they will move back with new knowledge and new vision of how they were gonna build their life through the agriculture, through the livestock, through the different type of activities related to that area and land. And the organic production that is so important uh, to your country is almost linked to the family production, right? We can say that it's, we talk about small farmers. So uh, how is it going to happen now? Because uh, you're going to improve uh, with the, this new area, and you think your country are, is going to invest in the family production? For sure. Uh, <clears throat> you know that in uh, agriculture or in farming, it's always place for big farms and for small family production. And family production uh, or family farming, it's one of the source of employment for people in a rural area. That's why government pay a lot of attention to let the people to self-employ themselves. Yes, of course, uh, when it's uh, family production, the volume cannot be big, or land which cultivated under cultivation cannot be big, like in huge farms with thousands of hectares. But their impacts also uh, allow the government to feel secure from food side, food production side, first of all, but parallel to that from employment and involvement of people into the activities related to that. Uh, 
this year for 2021, uh, state budget uh, allocated one and a half billion US dollars for restoration of these uh, liberated lands. Yes, uh, if we talk about size of Brazil, it's not a big amount, but for Azerbaijan, it's uh, quite big money. Uh, and that first steps will definitely uh, will also include the process of moving the people to their traditional places, settling them, and opening for them opportunities to be involved in this uh, agriculture product. But you know, it's uh, interlinked with each other. You cannot just go and uh, have a harvest. You have to uh, place, need to have a place where you can sell it, how to deliver to, to be sold. Uh, you need you to- need the technology. Technology, you need to uh, place where you can keep. Uh, you need to uh, fabrics where they will buy and proceed it and will use it. All of this interlinked. And so the agribusiness this, is actually really sure. big. There. And it's huge opportunity again for uh, not only internal investors, but for foreign investors. Today, uh, Azerbaijan is a country which is capable financially to invest to that territories. What we are mostly looking for, it's not investment as a money, but we are looking to the investment in form of technologies, modern technologies, where people with experience and knowledge can come, invest, get his own profit, but parallel to that, help us to build uh, this process on more sufficient and effective way. And it's very important, uh, it's, it's message which uh, our leadership, through the us diplomats, through the media, through, through the communication, trying to deliver to the rest of the world uh, to attract the attention to that process. And what about the highlights in production? Can we say that uh, your tomato is the best in the world? <laughs> what about the apples? Can you tell me a little bit about these fruits? Um, I should mention that even though that uh, Azerbaijan economy is more uh, energy oriented, we are uh, exporting a lot of gas and oil, uh, second item of our expert, after that is energy expert, is tomato. Because tomato of Azerbaijan has its own name, has its own brand, and it's well known, especially in uh, markets of Russia or Kazakhstan or other countries. But uh, of course, depends from climate. Uh, as other Azerbaijani products like apples, pears, and others also has its own uh, markets and consumers. Climate allow uh, of our products or fruits um, be harvested a little bit earlier than others. That's why it's go first to the market and has its own buyer. And big producers like uh, Moldova or Ukraine come after that. That's why we have this uh, privilege and we have this, uh, uh, how to say, support of the nature on that matter when we are first in the market and first uh, consumer usually come and get Azerbaijani products on their land. And we can proudly say that because it's very organic, it's very tasty. That's why uh, wherever you go, uh, you can look to the shelves and you can find if it's products from Azerbaijan, you know that's quality. That's amazing. Now let's talk about Brazil. You're here since 2017. Thousands, yeah. And what's your first impression? What was your first impression and what do you think about our country now? You know, uh, in 2017, when I arrived to Brazil, it was my first time in my life when I put my soil on Latin American continent. i never been here. And I, I never thought that I'm gonna be here, to be honest. But it's life of diplomats. Uh, what's uh, amazed me and made me happy that uh, your country is very friendly, family-friendly country. I came here with my two kids and my wife, and when you go to the uh, foreign country, you always think not only about professional side, but you also think about how uh, environment in this country will be positive for your family, how well they can adjust themselves to the new realities. And I'm happy to say that it was probably easiest part of our life here to adjust ourselves to the uh, life of Brazilian community, where people are very friendly, very open, uh, very supportive on any matters. And you feel yourself 
like at your home. But the only thing which you don't have here is winter. <laughs> and what about your family in your country? Do they feel the same about our country? You told me a story about your nephew. What happened there? Yes, you know, uh, because Brazil has a, such a rich nature and you have a, such a different nature from Europe where uh, we live, uh, my nephew called me last year, uh, not last year, in 2019, actually, it was before the uh, pandemic, and he said that he has a, a project. He was tasked to have a project, to implement project in biology in his school, and he needs something exotic, something new, uh, how he can amaze a class. Uh, I responded that I'm a diplomat, I'm not a biologist, I can't do nothing for you on that matter. But after that, I realized, oh, why not? That you're in Brazil, so? Yeah, I'm in Brazil, and I just simply went to the market. I purchased uh, probably 10 different exotic fruits which do not grow in Azerbaijan, do not export it there. The, the, the people, most people don't even know about these products. Carambola, there. for example. Carambola right? and many others, acai and uh, many others. And I sent to him these samples. And he had the hugest success in his class. When he made a presentation about exotic fruits which grow in Brazil, he gave them to taste these fruits. And uh, today, I think in his school, after Brazilian footballists, uh, second well-known item is your fruits and products uh, from Brazil, which was presented there for my nephew. So this is a uh, not funny story, but it's a real story, uh, how people get to, each, to know each other through the different ways. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, for your presence, for your time. It was an honor. Thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, we'll uh, wish you all the best. Uh, good luck, and you have a very beautiful program. And it's honor, really, to be here to talk and present your country through the, your program. Thank you. No Campo Diplomático de hoje, nós falamos sobre as relações comerciais entre o Brasil e o Azerbaijão, com destaque para a produção orgânica no país, o tomate e a exportação da carne brasileira. Você pode rever este programa e também outras entrevistas no nosso canal no YouTube. Aproveite para seguir a gente nas redes sociais, arroba Agromais TV. Continue com a programação do Agromais, seu canal voltado para o agronegócio 24 horas. Obrigada pela companhia. A gente se vê.